What's up guys? Welcome back to Alt Degree. My name is Hobson and if you're here, I hope you're ready to learn something today. It is a Tuesday evening here in Bali, Indonesia. I am still located in Ubud right now amongst the rice fields, enjoying the peace and quiet and the zen. Got this new shirt today. I'm digging it. So today I wanted to go over some of the logistics of my journey. I recognize that everybody comes from different backgrounds and I've definitely had a lot of help along the way, but hopefully you can take something from this video and apply it to your own life. So let's jump in. I had some pretty crazy questions from people over social media the first couple weeks I was here. Some people were wondering if I hit the lottery. Some people were wondering if I had saved up a bunch of money and was just blowing my life savings. Some people even wondered if I was living in a bamboo hut for like $5 a month with no AC. I wish, that sounds awesome. But no to all of those. It's very doable, you just have to have the discipline and the energy to do it. Change your mindset and you will change your life. First, I came from the US by myself. Like I arrived in Bali not knowing anybody or anyone. Joe, where'd we just touch down? Bali. Motherfucking Bali. Yep. <laughs> Joe's been waiting two years to get here. I've been waiting one finally made it. Traveling alone has been difficult at times. You know, there's benefits and there's cons to it. Anyone can do it and you should do it at some point. Like even if it's for a month or for a couple years, it really forces you to get comfortable with yourself and also just develop skills. How to find living accommodations, how to make money in tough situations, or how to just be more charismatic with people that you meet. But traveling has played a large part in my idea of wealth and freedom. I used to have a very different perspective on what being wealthy and what freedom was a few years ago. I had a lot of friends who were aiming to make six figures immediately out of college. They wanted to take on big corporate jobs that would pay them a large salary. And there's nothing wrong with that. Like at, at the time, that seemed like the move, the only move. So that's what I strove for. I thought freedom and wealth was basically having a large salary and getting paid as much as possible as quickly as possible. As I traveled in the US throughout college with some of my friends though, I began to realize that my idea of wealth was very different than some of my peers. I felt way happier traveling around with my friends, going to concerts, music festivals, uh, visiting other colleges or states. I felt way happier doing that than I did in the classroom or studying the markets or anything. Towards the end of my college career, I began to look at options outside of just a regular 9 to 5 job. I actually made plans to go teach English in Spain directly after college and then COVID happened and pretty much ruined that. I think everybody's familiar with that old story. And that was pretty crushing for me. That made me move back home with my parents. I was living in my hometown, working a remote sales job. Now I'm coming to the realization that maybe I substituted a high paying career job for the potential hopes of maybe traveling the world someday, which crushed me because I felt like I had messed up. So I did what most people in my position would do and what society wants you to do, which is get an entry level job. I interviewed around and eventually got hired for an entry level sales position job as a phone salesman, a cold call salesman, nothing glamorous. There was really two reasons I took the job. One is that it was a consistent paycheck. It was shit, honestly. It was $32,000 a year with uncapped commission, but you have to make sales to make commission. And two, it was completely remote. So that was really ideal for me because I thought, hey, maybe I could still travel. I was making about two grand a month after taxes, which isn't a lot looking back on it, but at the time living at home, not really having a ton of expenses, it was plenty for me. So I woke up one day and realized that, hey, the whole world's on pause, my job's remote, why don't I travel in the US? So I took out a $5,000 loan and bought a piece of shit Subaru Forester 2011, teal colored, that's my baby right there. I loved this car. This was my first official car, the one that I paid for fully with my money. A lot of blood, sweat, and tears went into this car, and I hit the road. My car was a piece of shit, but for me, it meant freedom. It meant that I could go anywhere, travel, and go see friends. And my thinking behind that was, was that since my job is fully remote, and I can work from anywhere, then I should. If I'm not going into the office, then why the heck am I sitting at home working? That's like the most boring thing you can do, is wake up, roll out of bed, and go immediately to work. 
Like, if I'm going to have to work, I might as well do it in a really cool place. So, with that in mind, the whole U.S. became my office. As long as there was Wi-Fi available, I could work. And Wi-Fi didn't really mean, like, a nice house or a good-looking Airbnb, a place with AC. Wi-Fi meant anywhere with Wi-Fi. I mean, I bummed Wi-Fi off of Starbucks parking lots, public libraries. There was even one time I logged onto my computer in an RV trailer in the Redwood Forest on the tip of the Oregon coast, which was sick. What I really got out of that was it showed me how irrelevant going into an office actually was. I'm going to say this once because I feel very strongly about it and then say it again for emphasis. If you are still going into the office for a job that doesn't absolutely require you to go into the office, then find a new job. I will say that again. If you're still going into the office and you have some sort of business job or anything that doesn't require you to be in an office building that you can just do over your computer, find a new job. You are wasting so much energy, time, money, mental energy, physical energy. It was great for me because I worked exactly eight hours a day and then immediately logged off. And then I was free to go do whatever. When I was on the West Coast, I still worked East Coast hours, so I had to get up three hours earlier. I woke up at 5 a.m. every morning, but I got to log off at 2 p.m. That was difficult, but it was so worth it. Once I actually just put my mind to it and woke up and just changed my mindset that, yeah, I had to get up early, but I literally had so much more time in the day to enjoy the nice beaches and go surfing or go hang with friends. It was great. This whole time, by the way, I was living on couches. I would go to cities or states, hit up friends I knew, and ask if I could just crash on their couch for a couple of days. It was a lot of fun because I got to see old friends and also I saved so much money. Literally, my salary was like $2,000 a month. I think it was like $2,200 a month. I'll actually show you the expense, like the expense sheet on that. It was funny because when I stayed with friends, to them it was just me crashing on their couch. But for me, a couch meant warmth, it meant stable Wi-Fi, it meant a shower. So I really saw that I began to appreciate these smaller things so much more. I had some friends who had just started some high paying jobs, but they didn't have a lot of free time. And I could look at their weekly schedules and compare it to my current one. And it was the choice was easy for me. I was honestly dirt poor and living paycheck to paycheck. But for some reason, I felt wealthy and I felt really happy. Eventually, for some reason that I still couldn't tell you why I moved back to a large city on the East Coast to start going into the office for my old sales job. The effect on my work was astounding. I, my sales dropped, my mood was awful, I started becoming negative towards people, which is never something I, I've really experienced. And for the first time in my life, I was seriously depressed. I had no motivation and I prayed every day that I would get fired so I could just get rid of the job. So eventually I asked myself, how do I change this? If you aren't willing to change yourself, then how can you expect anything to change? I took a look at my life and what was going on. I was wasting my time in an office every day, doing exactly what other people told me to do for a paycheck that barely covered my monthly living expenses. So I quit. It was not an easy decision. It was one of the hardest decisions because it was my first job. I had nothing lined up afterwards, but I was miserable. I didn't have a job for probably two or three months. It feels a lot longer looking back on it, but those two or three months were actually great. I did some side hustles and lived off some money I had saved up, but even still the money was running out quick and I needed to find another job. Since I had moved back into the city from traveling and living out of my car, I noticed that my money began to fly out of my wallet. I was already hurting for cash month to month and now I looked at my monthly expenses and realized where my money was going. Drinks on the weekend, eating out with friends, streaming services, I would go to the bar on Fridays or Saturdays and then wake up on Sunday and look at my bank account and realize I had spent $100 on shots with five people I was never gonna talk to again. Don't get me wrong, those nights are fun and I've had a lot of them, but at that point in my life, I realized that I wasn't doing myself or my future self any favor. So when I went to bed at night, I stopped watching Netflix and I started researching ways to travel and make money and live the lifestyle that I wanted to live. If it wasn't a remote job, I didn't want it. I would have taken anything if it was remote and meant I had a stable paycheck. Eventually, after countless interviews, I found the right company, the interviews went well, it was fully remote, and it was a job that I was used to. 
a phone call salesman. This position had better monthly pay. My yearly salary was about 50000 with commission, but it was still pretty modest compared to other people I knew. But since I was remote and allowed me to travel, it made me feel wealthy and I was happy. My monthly living expense in Bali is roughly 400 US dollars for my housing. That includes utilities, electricity, water, heating, cooling, cleaning, daily cleaning. I love how they clean everything here. It's awesome. I'm just talking about the United States because that's what I, what I know. But I know friends in New York or California or the more expensive areas of the US who pay close to $2,000 a month. That's insane to me. That was an entire paycheck for me at one point. The meal here in Bali is roughly three US dollars. That orange juice is delicious. Mm. This costs about, this is 20,000 IDRs. $2? Perfect. Oh, this food is so good. Oh, just look at this. This is breakfast too. I am saving money over here. So when people ask me, oh, am I blowing money or did I hit the lottery? The answer is no. I still have the same salary, the same amount of money. I'm just being a lot smarter with it. I just cut my budget down to things that actually matter to me. This allows me to live comfortably on the road, travel, and still build a career at the same time. Some people look at taking a trip as working hard, saving up all their money, and then blowing all their savings while they're vacationing on an island. I think that's an awful idea. Why waste all the hard work that you just put in on maybe like a few weeks of vacation? I say travel and work at the same time, build a career, stay happy, and stay wealthy. You literally have the option to do remote work through so many positions and jobs nowadays. Why wouldn't you do that? Sure, a cold call salesman is not a job to brag about. I get told to kick rocks at least 10 times a day. I get the phone hung up on me every other conversation and I make a modest salary, but it lets me live here. I was in a rush to get rich and financially free and I thought that meant getting a corporate job and devoting my life to the nine to five. Find a way where you can build a career and take control of your life. My family had a lot of love, but we were never super rich. We were a middle class family. This lifestyle isn't due to my parents' money. It's all my money. It's just me taking advantage of my resources and devoting my funds to stuff I wanna do. So the best thing for you to do is start to change the way you think and recognize that up until now, you have been told what to do your entire life. You have been programmed to think since elementary school that you have to continue to go to school, graduate, and immediately join the workforce and work until you save enough money to retire. For a lot of people, that's the only path and the only thing they've ever known. Instead of blindly following that path, take some time to figure out what you actually enjoy to do and then find the career that will let you do that. If you wanna travel, there are ways to do that today. I can't tell you how many people I've met over here in Bali who make good monthly salaries off YouTube, affiliate marketing, or just anything online. There's a reason they call everybody digital nomads, because as long as there's Wi-Fi and access to the internet, you can make money. If you want to focus on your salary and become insanely rich, then yeah, maybe a corporate lifestyle is the choice for you. And there's nothing wrong with that. It's just not for me. There are so many other ways to still make money and also have control of your time. You just have to have the courage to try them. I think back about quitting my job and realize that in that moment I was extremely nervous and that told me something. That when I'm making life decisions, if it feels like it's against the grain or it makes me extremely nervous, then I should probably do it. In order to live an extraordinary life, you can't live an ordinary life. So takeaways. Don't compare yourself to others. I don't want you to use this video to compare my life with yours. I'm just hoping that maybe you can get some advice from this. My path is very different from whatever path you are on right now and what everybody else is on. Focus on yourself. I was miserable at some points in my life because I was comparing my salary, myself, and my career to that of others who had very different goals in mind. Look at a situation from both sides before you judge it instinctively. Odds are the person living out of their van is probably 10 times happier than you going to work with a good salary but working 40, 50 hours a week. It took me almost two years to get here to Bali, but looking back on it, the journey has only made me stronger. If I had given up the first time, I would still be in that cubicle, banging my head against the wall, miserable and not living my life. So wake the hell up. Look for a remote job. Keep your head up and start tracking where your money goes every month. 
I can't tell you how much money I was spending at the bar or on Netflix or on ordering food. I started keeping track of my monthly expenses in Excel just to actually see where my money was going, and it was mind-blowing. This is from September of 2021 when I was living in Charlotte, North Carolina. So I had been back in a big city for a couple of months. I was working that sales job, and this is what I was spending every month on a very, very small monthly salary. My four main streams of income while I'm traveling are first and foremost, my current remote sales job. I don't wanna work a nine to five forever, but for right now, I don't have the money to quit. My monthly paycheck from that job is anywhere from three to 4,000 depending on how many sales I make. Some of you may think that's a lot. Some of you may think that's absolute chump change. It just depends on where you're at. But here in Bali, $3,000 goes a long way. And I mean a long way. The cost for a meal ranges from a dollar to $5 if you really wanna go out and go nice. Secondly, my car. So that Subaru I was talking about, that piece of shit Subaru, shout out the Sub. That car died right before I came to Bali. So long story short, I needed a new car before I left because I still had a lot of errands to run. So what I did is I took out a loan and bought a 2019 Toyota Camry. It was used, it had about 30, 40,000 miles on it. Regardless, it was still the biggest purchase I had made and also the biggest loan I had taken out. It was kind of scary, but it makes sense. Here's how. So I took out about a $23,000 loan, right? My monthly car payment is roughly $300. I use this website called Hire Car, where I can rent out my car to other people who want to use it for things like Uber, Lyft, DoorDash, Grubhub, or whatever they want to do. But for a daily rate, they rent out my car. So right now, my car is back in the U.S. I have a friend helping me out with it. Shout out, Andrew. I think it's roughly $39, $40 a day. So you do the math there. $40, let's, let's call it $40. $40 in a month makes me roughly what? $1,200, my monthly car payment is $300. It doesn't always get rented out for the full month, but if it does, that more than covers the car payment and gives me a little extra change here in Bali. Again, a couple hundred dollars here goes a long way. So basically somebody else is paying for my car. Another revenue stream for me is photography. So this is more of my passion and my side hustle. This really hasn't brought in any sort of revenue <laughs> since I've been traveling, ironically enough, but um, I love doing it. It brings me a lot of personal happiness. And again, that's the best type of wealth. So I take small jobs when I can, um, when I travel, and I hope to build that into something real someday. But for now, it's just happiness. And following my passions have helped me meet so many great people and make so many good memories. So always follow your passions because you never know when a career or an opportunity might arise from them. My last revenue stream is the easiest and the hardest way to make money while traveling, and that is investing. So if you guys are really interested in this, I will maybe make another video on exactly what kind of investments I've made. I mostly try and do crypto stuff, and this is not investing advice in any way, shape, or form. But what I'm getting at is that apps like Robinhood or Crypto.com um, Coinbase allow the average person to start learning about investing in different types of opportunities at really whatever age or whatever location they choose. I don't care if it's five dollars or a million dollars. Take the time to do some research, get more familiar with either the stock market, cryptocurrencies, or any other sort of investments, real estate, and try and figure out how to help set up your future self. Money is going to go a lot farther for your future self if you're putting it into a house or an investment than it is if you're paying for your Netflix bill every month or shots at the bar. The biggest thing is just to take control of your life and wake up. Realize that everything you have been told right now has been from somebody who started at the same place as you. Our teachers, our parents, our coaches, even the most successful people on this earth have started exactly where you and I are right now. Young, broke, and clueless. And what do young, broke, and clueless people do? They listen to whatever advice the world throws at them. Especially if you're younger, take chances and take risks. There's less of an opportunity cost now than later. I don't have a family, I don't have kids, I don't really have any outstanding monthly bills to pay right now, so I can afford to make mistakes. And from these mistakes, I learn a lot. I've already learned how to live in a different country, travel where I want to, meet new people, and also make money from different ventures. I hope this has shed some light on the possibilities of traveling and remote work in today's world. 
our resources today are honestly mind-blowing. We can live our entire lives online. I mean, the metaverse is about to happen. Most people are going to be living full-time in virtual reality anyway. If you've watched this far, thank you. Everything I've just talked about is why this channel is called Alt Degree. Alternative Degree. I didn't want to go get a master's degree. I didn't want to go get a doctorate degree. I couldn't afford it. And frankly, I don't know if I was academically smart enough to do that. So I wanted to get an alternative degree in life. And right now, it's working out pretty well because I get to live here. So don't be a sheep, be a wolf. Don't compare your life to others. Everybody has a different story and you will get to where you need to be when the time is right. But it will not come without some hustle, some discomfort, and a lot of perseverance. So as soon as this video ends, I want you to go make an Excel sheet of your monthly expenses and see where your money is going. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed. Comment something that you learned and I will see y'all on the next video. Let me know if y'all have questions. I'd be happy to talk more.